How's it guys, this is Davey FP and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'll be taking you guys to my very own team selection for the upcoming Game Week 33. So Game Week 33, a little bit of a weird Game Week hedged in the midweek between a blank Game Week and a double Game Week, but still quite important in terms of FPL. Now in terms of my team selection, as I always do, going to take a quick look at Game Week 32, the blank Game Week, where we actually have just used the freer chip. Was that a green arrow? Was that a red arrow? Hopefully a green arrow on a chip. But I'll show you guys where we're sitting in the overall ranks. Then I'll take a look at the current team selection for the upcoming single game week 33, as well as my transfer plan potentially with a minus four hit. So that's something you guys are interested in. Sit back, relax, and let's get right into it. So in terms of blank game week 32, all the games have concluded. I've actually waited for the end of the FA Cup game, the semi-final of United versus Brighton. I send my sorries to Brighton fans after missing out on a penalty shootout, where a player I actually do own for game week 33, Solly March, ended up missing a penalty. Obviously, then congrats to United and City, nice Manchester derby in the FA Cup final. But because I waited so long, all the news in this video is going to be the latest news as possible. Now, I'll be releasing this video tomorrow throughout the day. So if any news does come about tomorrow morning or after the FA Cup game, just keep that in mind. But going back to blank game week 32, as mentioned, the Friat was activated. And luckily, we did get a green arrow. Have seen some Friats that actually got red arrows, but those managers were pretty high in the overall rankings. So in total, we managed 70 points, which is pretty average, to be honest, in terms of the Friat, some kind of 50-50s didn't go away, and actually a few players disappointed quite a lot. But that 70 points was enough for a green arrow to the 125k mark, which is about a green arrow of 25k places. So we're kind of edging closer and closer to the top 100k, do hope that we manage to finish there, come game week 38, been a pretty bad season for myself overall, so top 100k finish will be quite nice. Then in terms of the transfer plan, coming up one free transfer and 0.3 million left in the bank. So a slight upgrade can be made, but as mentioned, I am looking at a minus four hit. So let's go on to my actual freer team. There was a little bit of kind of drama towards the end of my deadline stream, five minutes to go, kind of had a team with 10 minutes to go, but changed it with five minutes to go. We need to get some news about Jesus potentially starting. So I'll be going over my starting 11, but the bench pretty much stayed the same. I've got Goita with zero points. He didn't feature, but was actually on the bench. So the correct decision to actually have him on the bench as I had the other Crystal Palace goalkeeper in my first position. We then have Eze in the Crystal Palace versus Everton game. Pretty boring game overall, nil-nil. If you guys did go with Andres Pereira and got him subbed on, congratulations. As I've seen most of you guys actually had Madison and then either got Isaac or Andres Pereira off the bench. It's a little bit of jam there, but if I went with Eze, he would have come off the bench and he only got three points. We know Alex Moreno with only two points, kind of thought that Brentford would score, was hoping they wouldn't because I went without Ivan Tony. What ends up happening, Tony scores the goal, Alex Moreno loses a clean sheet, but at least he was on our bench. But still, I think he had a relatively good game, passed the eye test, but unfortunately, they lost the clean sheet as I said. Then finally, we have Fabian Schaar, so no, Fabian Schaar didn't get a clean sheet and kind of two bonus points. He actually got two assists in the game that Newcastle just played against Spurs, where they ended up winning 6-1. It's absolutely a mental kind of result there. Unfortunately, as you guys will see in my defensive department, Trippier didn't get any assists. But at least if you guys did have the double up with Shaw, you would have got some points. But as mentioned on the free at the bench is hardly ever used unless you guys did have Madison. And then hopefully you guys had Andres Pereira or Isaac first on your bench. But let's go on to our starting 11. And as mentioned, Guita was on the bench. So therefore, Johnston was going to be in the starting 11. And he managed to get 10 points. I think Johnson managed to get kind of five saves resulting in one save point, but all three bonus points. But was one save off getting another point. At the end of the day, 10 points is a massive kind of milestone and super happy that we managed to choose him, but he was the kind of template choice on a free it. Now the Crystal Palace Everton game was pretty boring, but at least Johnson made a few saves as those save points are going to result in a nice haul. Let's go into the defensive department here with Trent Alexander-Arnold only got one assist, taking him to five points. I think Robertson also got an assist and I think maybe even a bonus point. But because Liverpool conceded uh, quite a few to Nottingham Forest, Trent definitely lost the clean sheet. Now the play definitely was going to be for that Liverpool double up in defence if you guys didn't go for Jota. Robertson got an assist, Trent got an assist and as mentioned that's why I didn't really like Van Dijk. I thought that even Robertson in this new system with Trent playing in the midfield, Robertson was still getting a lot of chances and is still on set pieces. That's exactly what happened. So congrats if you guys did go for that Liverpool double up in the defence department. You guys will see what double up I chose to go for. Spoiler alert, it wasn't too great. Now talking about not too great, let's bring up Trippier for Newcastle. Now winning by 5 goals was going to be good enough for Newcastle, but unfortunately it wasn't 5-0, no. it was going to be 6-1, with Trippier not getting any assists in those 6 goals. So I was a little bit unhappy with that, we always speak about Trippier kind of being this attacking threat going forward, while well, they scored 6 and he got no attacking returns. But at the end of the day, kind of a freak result, can't really blame Trippier for not getting any assists, but I would have liked one or two attacking returns. Now Newcastle also lost the clean sheet and that's why Trippier only ends up on two points. So unlucky if you guys did go for the double up with the Newcastle defense. 
Now, I've saved the best for last in terms of my defensive department. It's going to be Castagna from Leicester. Now, a massive 10 points after scoring a goal and all three bonus points, but unfortunately, they did lose the clean sheet to Wolves pretty early on. Now, I won't lie to you guys. When I saw the notification of Wolves scoring early on, I thought this was kind of a terrible call to go for. I know I was going for Castagna for his attacking thread, but you guys know defensive returns are always pretty nice. So the first half comes and goes, Castagna's on one point, goes into the second half, manages to score in the kind of 80th minute, I think, securing all three bonus points and obviously a defender goal. So a nice little punt there to go for on a free. I'd always love these kind of punts to go for and super nice when they actually repay you. Now I was quite close between going for Castagna and Alex Moreno, but the reason I went for Castagna, if you guys did miss the deadline stream, was the day before there was a rumor with Harvey Barnes' injury that Castagna might start at wingback. Now he didn't start at wingback, but he is always quite an attacking fullback. And in the back four, he was getting loads forward, and that's why he ended up scoring the goal. So that's why I went for Castagna because of his high ceiling, and that's exactly what happened. Unfortunately, no clean sheet here. That would have been absolute gold. But if you guys did go for Fabian Schatz, that's probably what I would have gone for instead of Castagna. That's only a two-point difference. Now let's go into our midfoot apartment and let's start off with the Arsenal assets. So Friday night was a super big roller coaster. It started off looking absolutely terrible. Was quite happy that I didn't go for an Arsenal defender at the end of the day. But then Arsenal weren't scoring goals, even though Southampton were. But luckily, Saka and Martelli ended up getting a goal. Saka got an assist as well, I think. So 13 points and 9 points is pretty respectable and what I was kind of expecting from that Southampton at home game. Now, it's always nice maybe the result doesn't go your way in terms of Arsenal, but the players still get your FPL points. And that's exactly what happened with Saka and Martinelli. Now, the third option was a hotly contested topic. What should your triple up be from Arsenal? Saka and Martinelli were pretty locked in, but the final option was either going with Odegaard, Gabriel or Jesus. Now, Ben White was added to the mix and in terms of Gabriel, he managed to get an assist, which was quite nice. But Odegaard ended up scoring and Jesus obviously ended up blanking. So the optimal three was to go for the three in midfield. And if you guys did go for that, like I've seen some of you did, congrats on that move. Now, I'm going to split up my Liverpool options and talk about them one by one. Let's go with the first option, Mo Salah. Put the Camps you armband on him like the majority of you guys did. Ended up scoring a goal, no kind of bonus points like Mo Salah usually does. But at the end of the day, I think I was quite happy with him only getting the one goal. The reason for that was that he was quite wide in that Nottingham Forest game. That defensive setup from them was pushing him quite wide. Yes, he had a few chances himself, created a few chances as well, but unfortunately, only the one goal at the end of the day, but I'll take that. So 7 points, double to 14, but if you guys did go for someone like a Sako Martelli, you would be absolutely smiling, as they were better camps your options. Now my final asset to talk about is the reason why I was quite unhappy with that Liverpool game was going to be Gakpo with only one point. So if you guys went with Robertson, if you went with Jota, even better. But I chose to go for Gakpo because I thought he was more nailed. So what ends up happening, Gakpo gets subbed off before the 60 minute mark for Darwin Nunes after Firmino was out with an injury. So after the press conference, I thought this move wasn't going to happen. I thought that maybe Darwin would come off for Jota. Jota ends up scoring two goals. Gakpo gets subbed off for only the one point appearance. So it shows you how we can actually predict and predict pretty badly what's going to happen in these games. So I was super unhappy because, as I mentioned, Robertson and Jota both outscored them, who were the potential triple-up replacements. But it is what it is at the end of the day, Gakpo did have a chance cleared off the line, which if it did go in, I would have been pretty happy with those points. But what can we do about it? If you guys did go for Jota, what can I say more than congratulations, because that was a nice punt to go for, and Jota's definitely in good form if you guys want to look at a transfer for game week 33 onwards. But I will continue the disappointment going into our forward department, going to start off with Gabriel Jesus, one of the only Arsenal players actually to blank, but at least he did outperform Gabriel by one point. Now, if you guys did watch my deadline stream, the kind of decision even put you guys a poll to vote on. It was a 60-40 split. Should I go for Castagna or Jesus or Ivan Tony and also Gabriel? Well, luckily, Gabriel and Jesus actually outperformed that combination by two points. So it is a small wins at the end of the day. But what I will say about Jesus is that I think he had 1.34 XG over the entire fixture. So a little bit unlikely not to score, but as I always say, if you guys are kind of an eye test, or footballs played on grass merchant, you'll probably say that XG is absolutely useless. But I'm more of a stats-based manager, so therefore I will take the XG to the bank, the imaginary bank that is. Then we move on to Ollie Watkins. Now Ollie Watkins was going to be in my team, so yes he did blank, but I was never kind of considering not going for him after his hot scoring streak over the past couple of game weeks. Now that Brentford Aston Villa game was actually pretty close. I was hoping that it would be an absolute goal fest. Ollie Watkins getting points, Brentford getting points, hopefully not Ivan Tony if I didn't own him. But that wasn't the case and ended up being a 1-1 draw. Now Ollie Watkins wasn't involved in that Aston Villa goal and that's why he only has two points. But I still back him to get a few points in the upcoming game weeks. Now my final option was super disappointed because I was backing the Dom Solanke to get us a few points. Bournemouth have been in pretty good form. Dom Solanke has been in good form. And their attacking stats look pretty good. Now West Ham of course keep a clean sheet against them. Ends up not scoring and the replacement I could have gone for. Because if you guys do recall, I think I had about 5 million left in the bank. I could have gone for Ivan Tony, but I want to take a punt and go for Tom Solanke. 
So I wasn't happy, but I guess it was a punt to go for, so I can't be too mad at it not returning. And if you guys look for Ivan Tony rather, then congrats on that move. But as I said, 70 points was pretty kind of average for a free hit. If Gakpo ended up scoring, if Solanke ended up scoring, we'd be looking a lot better. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Let me know in the comments down below how many points you guys scored. Probably outscored me, probably looking at a bigger green arrow. But where are you guys sitting at the overall ranks? And what's your end goal? I think for now, let's look at a push for the top 100k. We'd like to finish in the top 50, but that might be out of the stretch. And fortunately, the top 10k finish might be out of reach. But it might not be for you guys. And if you guys are around the top 10k, let's try and get in there. Now before we talk about my actual Game Week 33 transfer plan, I want to give you guys the context of my current team and the reason why I might not actually make a transfer, but the reason I might actually take a minus 4 hit. Now as I said, I've waited for the end of the Man United game. It looks like Bruno Fernandes might have come off with an injury. Rashford played the full 120 minutes. Will he play in the midweek? Who kind of knows? But we might get more clarity on that before the Game Week 33 deadline. So with that in mind, let's go over my bench to start off with, and this will make a lot more sense as I go through my starting 11, but I am currently benching Kepa, Saka, Luke Shaw, and Henry. Now in terms of Henry, that's a no-brainer against Chelsea Way, tougher game on paper. Don't trust Brentford to keep a clean sheet, and with Luke Shaw, I expect Harry Kane to score. Now I'm going to bring in Edison right now because he relates to Kepa and Saka at the moment. Let's talk about the more obvious discussion there. Kepa versus Edison, Arsenal at home, Brentford at home. I expect Brentford to potentially score against Chelsea. Chelsea aren't looking the best at the moment, and that's why I might back the Edison clean sheet. Now Edison does have the harder fixture, but if I do choose to bench Saka, I'm going to play the odds here. I'm going to hope that you guys with Arsenal attackers don't get points, and I get a Man City clean sheet. But if I do choose to start Saka, if I have to go with Saka, I'll play Kep at the moment. But as I said, I'm playing the odds here, and that's why I'm starting Edison. Now in terms of Saka against Man City, it's going to be a tight game in my opinion. I think Man City, what they're going to do is kind of set up defensively, try not to concede, because the only thing they can't do in this fixture is lose to Arsenal. A draw will be good for them, a win will be good for them, but as I mentioned, they can't lose, and if they keep a clean sheet, that's impossible. So that's why currently Saka is going to be on my bench, but there might be some injuries in my midfield department, and therefore I'm fine with playing him at the moment. Now if you guys do have a Jack Grealish, probably a similar situation here, might be a close game, might be quite a high scoring one. Are you benching a Jack Grealish or a Saka at the moment, or are you playing them in your starting 11? Now at least in our defender department, there's no kind of concerns, the fixtures look good, starting off with the Stupanan against Nottingham Forest away. Now yes, at the moment, Nottingham Forest look like a pretty strong team, scoring two against Liverpool, but Brighton are a better team defensively, and Estupanan still gets some attacking threat. Now the only thing unfortunate here is it is an away game, and Nottingham Forest at home are pretty strong, and I think they have scored in the majority of games at their home field. Now Brighton just played 120 minutes, obviously lost that in the semi-final, where will the kind of spirits be? There might be some rotation there, but let's hope Estupanan starts the game. The next up, we have the double up of the Newcastle defence, Everton away. Now I have faith in this Newcastle defence to hopefully keep a double clean sheet. We've got Trippier and also Botman. Now I would have liked to show on this backline because of his attacking threat or at least his recent attacking threat, but Trippier and Botman's what I have. Now yet again, like a Stupanan, an away game isn't great from a defensive point of view, and with Everton batting the relegation battle, I think this might be quite a close one. But I'd rather start a play against Everton away than I'm probably sure against Spurs away, as United still have some defensive frailties. Going to midfoot apartment, let's start off with our United assets. I've got Rashford and I've got Bruno Fernandes. Now, if you guys saw the Newcastle result today, you'll probably be playing both of these assets as Spurs are simply terrible from a defensive point of view. But when you look a bit closer, you see Rashford playing 120 minutes, Bruno playing 100 minutes, subbed off with a potential knock, and that does worry me slightly. But let's wait and see what Ten Hag says throughout the upcoming days. If he's confident and says that Rashford and Fernandes should be good, I mean, they did win the FA Cup semi-final, the Spurs should be high, so that's how both these two players start. Now for me at the current moment, it's between Saka and probably Bruno Fernandes. So if Bruno Fernandes is injured, I'll simply sub Saka on. Now another double up in the midfield apartment is going to be Matoma and Solly March. Obviously Solly March is missing the penalty. I'm hoping that he does rebound from this and puts in a good shift against Nottingham Forest away. Great fixture on paper, like Liverpool showed. They have some defensive frailties and I expect Brighton to kind of exploit those. So Matoma and March will definitely be in my squad unless they are injured, which at the current moment, I can't see them being. Then finally in our forward line, going to start off with Erling Haaland back in our team after not having him on the game week at 32, free it. And quite happy to have him back in my squad, but the fixture isn't that great, but at least it is a home game. So Man City vs Arsenal coming up, I think on Wednesday, is going to be a super contested game, as in my opinion, whoever wins this probably wins the title. So you know Haaland in the big games usually does well, so definitely in the camps he shouts. Then we have Oli Watkins, who's probably the best fixture in our team at the moment. Fulham at home. Fulham are playing better at the moment, but I expect Aston Villa to score a few against them. And that's why I'm happy that Oli Watkins isn't my starting 11. Now, I think that Aston Villa will rebound from this Brentford game. I think Brentford are quality side. Fulham are also pretty decent, but their defensive stats haven't been that great. So let's hope that Oli Watkins does well, but I'll talk about him shortly in terms of the Camsey debate. 
Then finally, we've got Harry Kane against Man United at home. And I expect Harry Kane to actually score in this fixture. United, as I mentioned, have some defensive injuries. And I expect Spurs to potentially bounce back from this freak result against Newcastle. But I guess if you ask any Spurs fans at the moment, they say they're playing simply terribly. And that's why I'm slightly concerned about owning Harry Kane. But for now, I'm keeping the faith, but I'll talk about him in the transfer plan because if we want a certain Egyptian, we have to downgrade the Englishman. Now, the final talking point I want to go over is going to be all about camps here. And right now, I've got the arm man on Ollie Watkins. So yes, that's right. No Erling Haaland for me at the current moment, but I think this is about a 60-40 split. The reason I'm currently going for Ollie Watkins is I like his fixture more. And the other thing about it is that I need a punt with a few game weeks remaining. As you guys can see, 125k, I need a punt to potentially go up the ranks. And I honestly believe Campsy is the best opportunity to do that. But come the deadline, I might be back on Erling Haaland, but right now, as I mentioned, 60-40 towards Ollie Watkins against Fulham at home. Right now, you guys can let me know in the comments down below who's your captain going to the upcoming game week. You can comment why I'm mad for going for Ollie Watkins, because I assume the majority of you guys are on Erling Haaland. So in terms of my overall team structure, you guys can see the starting 11 looks pretty strong. I have Saka on the bench who can come on if we do have a few injuries. And that's not to be honest, we can actually bank the transfer. But if we don't, let's go over a transfer plan that I might be considering closer to the deadline. So going on to my transfer plan for the upcoming single game week 33, as mentioned, you guys have just seen my starting 11. I could potentially bank a transfer, have some bench coverage if we have some injuries, so we could be good to go. But there's one debate currently in my mind, and it's about an Egyptian man. It's going to be Mo Salah. He has West Ham away in game week 33, not the best fixture in the world, but do you guys consider Mo Salah to be better than Harry Kane against United at home, plus four points? The reason I'm saying plus four points is I will have to take a hit if I want Mo Salah in game week 33, Versus the plan to bring him in at 34 for free. So right now, you guys can comment down below. Do you think Mo Salah outscores Harry Kane by four points in game week 33? Now, if I do want to go for Mo Salah, I obviously need a midfielder transfer, but then also a funds transfer. Let's go over the first transfer to go for the player I'll see departing my squad is going to be Bakai Saka from Arsenal. Now, Arsenal have Man City away, Chelsea at home, and then Newcastle away in the next three fixtures. So the fixtures aren't great on paper. We had a Mo Salah as a double game week in game week 34 against Spurs and Fulham at home. Now on paper, Spurs look terrible. Fulham I don't have the best defensive stats. Those two home games could be a massive haul for Mo Salah. But as mentioned, the original plan was to bring Mo Salah in for game week 34, but I can move that transfer up one single game week, and that's going to include Saka out for Mo Salah. Now that is a big upgrade to do, so I need a lot of funds to do it, and that's why Harry Kane will be on the way out. So Spurs have United at home, Liverpool away, and then Crystal Palace at home, so no double game weeks, but I guess the fixtures don't look that bad. Now the transfer in for Harry Kane will be Isaac, I know off his brace today against Spurs, but I still think it's a great option because after game week 34, Newcastle have a double game week. You guys can't just see it in terms of the fixtures. So I'll be looking for Isaac in the future anyway, so let's bring this transfer up. He allows me the funds to upgrade to Mo Salah and still have some pretty good fixtures. Everton away, Southampton at home, and then Arsenal at home. Good fixtures on paper, and he's in good form. So if you guys do look at the transfers in isolation, I think there's a great transfer to go for. Mo Salah in, Isaac in, but I was planning to do this move next game week anyways, but I could bring it one game week forward. Now what will cause me to do this move, maybe some doubts about Harry Kane, but right now I think that I might just stick with it and do it for free next game week. But you guys can offer me the thoughts down in the comments below. Are you guys planning to bring in Mo Salah this game week? Do you think West Summer Way is an easy fixture on paper? Or are you guys also looking to postpone this move to game week 34 and then do it for free? You guys can also comment your transfer plans in the comments down below. Might be similar to mine, might be completely different. There might be those of you out there that are even planning to use the wild card. Let me know all your dilemmas in the comments down below. Otherwise, hope to see you guys in the deadline stream coming up tomorrow, one hour before the deadline. But it's nice to have you guys. Hope you did enjoy it. If you did like, if you didn't subscribe, if you haven't subscribed yet. As mentioned, deadline stream tomorrow. Hope to see you guys there. But I'm going to sign off for now. This has been Davey FPL, and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.